Let us know if you have any questions. If you need help with anything. Wait. Okay. Ignore the beginning part. Okay. Just start adding up your score. If you missed one, though, there's um, the numbers up at the top. That's what that is. instruction sheet, it says a score of plus 160 would indicate extreme conservatism, while a score of negative 160 would be extreme liberalism. Scores can thus be determined on the bell curve. So what you'll do is you'll plot your um, score on the timeline based on that. Okay. So like radical far left would be negative 160, and radical far right would be plus 160. So this will give you a view of what side do you lean? So what number do you have? The liberal line, the one yeah. on the left, is negative 80. That'll give you an idea of where your number would fall. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. So it goes negative 160, negative 80, zero, 80, 160. You guys got that over here? Okay. I thought it was pretty good. Like, I don't know if it's wrong, I don't know if it's right. And you might need this more like 
more information on the topic mm -hmm. to know you. <coughs> Also, this quiz tends to lead more liberal because it's more issues that concern our, isn't that right? Yeah, like our yeah. generation. Our generation. So you're probably more moderate than, mm -hmm. so you're not probably negative 38. You're probably a little bit more. Yep. Okay. So can I have six volunteers? Yes. Yeah. 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 Come on up. You can take a seat. Oh, so are we playing math? Three. Three. Chairs? Four. Five. Wow. Six. Was that me? No. Oh, no that's that's large. Let's go. No, that's me. <laughs> Thanks for volunteering. Thanks for volunteering. Yeah. Thanks for volunteering. Yeah. Plus two. Yeah. 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 on her shoulder and she would have to get up and you can move into the inner circle. And here's a set of the questions in case you guys want to go over them again. Oh. You can read them. So, oh, in we particular, have to number five. Yeah, number sure. five. So it's like say you had a strong opinion about something and you want to talk about it questions? to see other people's opinions. You or if you were in the neutral, if you didn't know, bring that up, see what other people think. So are we having a discussion between yes. us? Yes. Yeah, no one on the outside is going to talk unless they tap you out. And then I can get out of the circle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you guys can tap each other out whenever you please. Okay. So just to start you guys off, we'll start by talking about number five, because everybody was pretty split about that. So that was, a person should be able to use and grow small quantities of marijuana in the privacy of his or her, her home with no legal consequences. One more question. Yes. If someone taps us out, do we go back in when they're done, or they just stay in? No, they stay in. Okay. Well, friends. <laughs> BC and I had a chat about this, and we said that it's not hurting anyone or killing anyone. Um, how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's like a garden. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is against the wall, though. So just because it's not hurting, just because I speed and don't hurt anyone. Doesn't mean it's okay because I did get a speeding ticket ticket over the weekend. Uh -huh. What would be your your definition of small? It says small quantity. What? Well, you know, I don't know how the brand. measuring yeah. weighing scale works really. <laughs> <laughs> but, um. <laughs> okay, like a small quantity of weed. I don't know this, but it would be around you know. Hypothetically. Yeah. Hypothetically, I'm not saying a couple pounds, but like, you know, something small, you know, something like, I don't know, that you can smoke by yourself. And like, you know, you got numbers and statistics with other things that you can smoke, like heroin, tobacco, stuff like that that kills people. And then you got marijuana. You don't have really high cases of deaths by marijuana or injuries, whatever. So like, you growing a small quantity and whatever you please to do with that, it shouldn't hurt anyone. Very nice. Next question. All right, tap me back up. Also, everyone has to tap in these ones. <laughs> yeah, so tap so me back up. So they have to be in the circle once. OK? That's a rule. OK. OK. So the next one we're going to talk about is number 19, which says birth control information, non-prescription contraceptive devices in the morning after pill should be made available on high school campuses. So a lot of people ask, should it be free? Is it to be sold? So you guys can debate what you think it should be. 
or if it should not be available at all? Regardless, if it's free, I think it should still be available because, I mean, once you're like a sophomore, junior, you're able to get a job, and if it wasn't free, you can still pay for it. And I know, like, I was uncomfortable asking my mom about getting on birth control in high school, so, like, I don't know if it could be a way that you could, I know it's kind of bad to, like, get on it without, like, having to ask your parents. Um, but I think it's good just to put out there for them and show them, like, what's available. And you would rather them be safe and, like, try something? If they're trying something, so you would rather be the ones to give it to them if they aren't comfortable asking their parents so they have somebody that they could get it from and they just are going, aren't going without. Just like BC is saying, it's something we got to practice. Since we're health educators, we got to practice what we preach, be able to help our students out and give them what they need if they feel uncomfortable about something, just give them the information, even help them in the right direction. But to an extent, do you feel like that's condoning? Not like, I see both sides, I do. But yeah, I feel like <laughs> yeah, it's not necessarily condoning it, but it's an option because... I think I would be okay if it said, like, condoms and birth control, but, like, morning after pill and all that stuff, that... I think if you've made that decision, one, like, that requires, like, maybe some counseling stuff because that's a really big decision. And if you're offering abortion and things like that, like, if you're 15 years old okay, at that point in time, it's it should be harder than just going to the office and getting it. You know what I mean? I think there has to be like some talking happening at that point. Try to think about the key words in that too. It's more directed towards the female sex. There's nothing in there about males, honestly. You can read it. I mean, birth control, I mean, if that's encompassing condoms too, but there's no clear yeah. distinction, so. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, I like what you said. I kind of changed my mind, but it doesn't say anything. I mean, is non-prescription contraceptive yes. devices is that abortion? Huh? It's not. Mm-hmm. But it's not a contraceptive at the same time. But when you get into the morning after and like I didn't know if it meant things like, like that or like yeah. non-prescription would be con- okay. I definitely agree there should be something like within this that you have to talk to someone if it's like the plan B, if it's like trying to get like an abortion. Um, I think like birth control condoms, like that's fine. Like you can go get them. But the other stuff, like they're very young. That's like a really um, tough thing to go through. So I agree with that. I just wanted to add the extra point that birth control isn't just for sex. And I feel like we're focusing a lot on the fact that like we're going, like you said, are you condoning it? And I'm not sure, I can't remember if you said it before or after the morning after pill, but if we're, we're not just condoning sex, we're promoting oh, no, like I body posi- like the positivity of the woman. And I know I was terrified to ask my mom for birth control because I have awful periods. I would miss a week of school because I would be de- like dying. Mm-hmm. So I think it's also important to us to notice that. So I just wanted to mm-hmm. yeah. bring that up because that wasn't brought up. Birth control isn't just for sex. As most people just stereotype that it is. Yeah. Right, yes. Yeah. Stacy, <laughs> I mean, I completely agree with that because I was scared to ask my mom. Like, it was just like for period cramps and stuff. But I was scared to ask my mom because it was like the first one time asking her seriously about like birth control and that stuff. And she was like completely open with it. But I would uh, much rather like have went through the school kind of first. Just like, yeah. yeah. Wow, really? <laughs> We need a male perspective on this. It's just some stuff. Ahead, it's just some stuff. Circle, My fault, bro. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just some stuff you don't like talking to your parents about. And, like, educators, most educators, I should say, are non judgmental. So they're there for you to talk to. Like, I had a. A football my football coach I talked to him about everything so like it's just some person that you know you could you could go to and talk to them about it and you know they're not going to judge you or they're not going to you know belittle you because you're doing something that they probably attempted or tried when they were younger also so it's just some stuff that you would do in school that or talk about in school that you just wouldn't talk about with your parents because they're not that friend I should say yeah they're more of a stricter person. Well, no, and I just think that that's where schools, too, like, should be utilizing things like nurse practitioners, their um, health and physical education teachers, and things like that, because, like, you guys are so much more knowledgeable on that than, say, like, I'm just a regular, like, gen ed teacher. I feel like if it's done, though, it should definitely be done in the sense where 
you're educating them on what they need and how to use it or if they are going to do something, you know, where to get it from. But you're still giving them the education on how to be safe and not to do it or to wait or something like that. Right. Okay, so we have time for one.